Okay, Alan, we're on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting the old to order. This is the April meeting for the Ballot for County Zoning Board of Appeals. For those of you that have never been here, let me give you a quick rundown how we operate so you can keep up with us. I will call <coughs> I will call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lectern. They will present the information that was in the application so that we can discuss it. There could possibly be questions and or discussions among members or back and forth to staff. Once we have heard from that uh, part, I will ask if the applicant or if someone is here to represent the applicant would like to give us any additional information. If so, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, give us the information you would like for us to take under advisement. Again, there will be probable discussions and or questions back and forth amongst the board members and the participant. If there are multiple people here that are in support, we would like to have that information for us. If you are satisfied with the information that has been presented, there's no need to give it to us two or three times. If you feel like information has not been given to us that you think is important, please come to the collector. Give us your name and address for the record. Give us, <coughs> give us the information you'd like for us to take under advice. When we have heard from the pro side, then I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition or if any persons are here that have questions about what is being requested. If so, please come to the lecture. Give us your name and address for the record. Give us the information you would like for us to take under advice. Please try to give us the information as fully as you can when you have the chance so that we don't have a, re, a rebuttal and re-rebuttal and back and forth. We'd like to try to get it all at one time. It is normally the situation that we render a decision here today. However, it is in the bylaw that should we feel like information is lacking or parties need to discuss options, we do have the right to postpone action until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Okay, uh, as we asked earlier, I think nobody else has come in, but please sign in in the back for us. The first case we're going to call is Louse County Case VAR 2017-04, GDB Capital Group LLC. Carmel, you have the <laughs> show. Yes, sir. Good our first case is a county case. Um, this is a request for variance to our lot access, lot frontage requirement. So the property consists of 2.6 acres and it's located on Clapstone Road. Clapstone Road is an unpaved, unproved dirt road that connects Valdale Road with US 41 North. In this case, I believe on page three of the staff report, the applicant is attempting to get a survey um, report and upon our review we saw 
where this 2.69 acres doesn't have any signage on the county maintained road. However, we also found that the property does have a recorded ingress, egress easement to the property. On the slide there, you can see um, on the right side of the property, on the side of the property, where there's a kind of travel lane there. Um, there's also a photo where you can actually see the travel path that they use to access the property. Um, the property owner um, is represented um, today um, by Mr. Moser, but he's just trying to get this survey recorded, and without um, a variance, you know, he cannot get the, the survey recorded. So staff are comfortable that there is a recorded easement on the property and that this company does that they have a way to get to and from their property without someone restricting that access. So we are recommending approval with no conditions. All right, thank you very much. Are there any questions or discussions among board members at this time? I have a question. Does, doesn't that easement relieve the no, the county doesn't recognize easements as a formal means of, of access. All properties have to have direct access on the county. <clears throat> but this lot was already existing. It was created by deed. It was created by deed, and these are created all the time. That doesn't meet our standards. Any other questions or discussions? Thank you, Carmel. Is there anyone here that would like to give us any additional information, or are you satisfied with what has been presented? May it please the board, very briefly. Yes, sir. My name is Gary Mosher, 1706 North Patterson. I represent GDB Capital Group, LLC. Um, this property was initially split up and, and, and configured in the way it is, I think, back in 1978. Although uh, Carmel said it's an easement, actually, as to this property, the original deed conveyed it as part of the property. Other subsequent deeds call it an easement. It is, it is an easement as to the property that is contiguous to this property that's south of it. There's a piece of property. And Carmel, if you'll put that back there, let me show it real quick. There's a piece of property with a home, a very nice home, as a matter of fact. You see the home right here. This is an easement as to this property, and it comes back here and actually comes into this property back here as well. This property was allowed by its former owners to uh, uh, fall into disrepair. My client bought it at a tax sale and was trying to revive it and make it a viable piece of taxable property on the Lowndes County tax records. And we would very much appreciate it if you would grant the easement so that we can go in, he can go in, do the work, and put it back in the market, increase its tax value. If you right. should have any questions, we glad to answer First question I have is, what is the intended purpose for the property? Well, eventually, it'll become just like it was before. It'll become a residential property. Okay, so they're either planning on either rebuilding or probably tearing down and start over. Tearing down and starting over because if you can see what's out there right now, I, I, I saw it right there. It'd be tough. <laughs> There's not much left of that what's there. In fact, it looks like it's really a mobile home as opposed to anything else. Okay. So but he has he has uh, some people that are interested in it. They're interested in going out and building on it and making it their home. Yes. And if if it was stipulated that the road to access it be maintained so that emergency vehicles could pass fire trucks, ambulances, law enforcement as needed, that they would keep it <clears throat> where they could get in and out comfortably. Well, hmm. that's a that's a mouthful because I don't know that what size trucks may come out later on or anything else. I mean well, I they, they're going to maintain it will be maintained in such a manner the people that can be used for ingress and egress to it, to this property and also to the property that's directly behind it. Right. Well, but as far as trying to say that we're going to blacktop it or gravel it or something no, like this, I don't think that's going to be the case. No, we're talking about limbs encroaching so that it would prevent 
a fire truck, for instance, would get to that if it was an emergency? Well, I think if the zoning board of appeals required that, then we would make sure that that takes place. That's all I need. Any other questions or comments from the board at this time? Thank you very much, Mr. Bowden. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Is there anyone here in opposition to this request or has questions about what is being requested? I only have one question. Is, is he requesting that barrel only for one reservation? Or is he trying to do some kind of, you know, development? The information that we have at this point is that it would be a single family residence on one two acre approximate lot. Now, if they go in there and wanted to cut it into smaller pieces, that would be entirely up to whatever code is allowed, but I don't think they're going to be allowed to. They'd have to come back before us. I didn't think they could come back. Go ahead and you know, make a subdivision because it's, number one, it's not big enough. Right. Number two, it really is going to be a problem if they don't have a real good access road. And that's, the, that's when engineering and safety and all that's going to become a, a real problem if there's more than one house. Okay. I have a question. Because it's zoned R1. Yes. So two houses. Could be two lots. Without, they all have, have to come before you guys. Okay. Because this variance is for the well, students. One lot. Six. One lot. Okay. May I please board? It's not the intent of my client to subdivide this thing into a bunch of little lots. Thank you. Any other questions or is there anybody else here in opposition to what is being requested? Was there any contact to your office concerning this case? Yes, sir. I did get a couple of calls and their concerns were a subdivision going out. Okay. All right. Anybody have any more discussions? Any questions? Can I entertain a motion on this request? I suppose that we uh, approve this variant site in D and H of the UL DC and also adding the fact that insurance should be assessed dealing with the emergency vehicles, intro, and exit, egress, hospitals. I have a motion on the floor from Dr. Housel to grant the request as presented with the provision that the entrance and exit lane be maintained to accommodate emergency vehicles, etc. Do I have a second? I have a second, Mr. McCall. All in favor, raise a hand. Unanimous, good luck with it. Okay, next case that we'll call is City Case Application 2017. <coughs> 01 Dallas Country Club, 3500 Country Club Road. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Please let the record show that Nancy is going to recruit her, recuse herself from this uh, discussion, being that she has a interest in the Country Club. Okay. Do you remember how to do this? I almost forgot how to do stack a board. <laughs> <laughs> it came back to me now. Okay. Your one home city case pertains to the Valdosta Country Club, located at 3500 Country Club. It is about 338 acres, just a little bit over. Most of it is R15, which is a single family. <laughs> with a little bit of community commercial. 
Marshall in there as well. Um, what they are looking to do is, it's a fully developed country club, tennis courts, country club facilities, um, recreation, things of that nature. They are building a building about 80 foot, 8,300 square foot, a 65 by 127 foot metal building to store golf carts, things of that nature. They intended to leave it metal. Metal buildings, metal facades, sheet metal, exposed sheet metal is prohibited in anything other than an industrial or manufacturing district. Basically, so when you're driving down on commercial corridors or residential corridors, you don't see an industrial look. Um, it requires it to be planted with something, stone, brick, glass, things of that nature. So what they did when the when this regulation was brought to their attention, they submitted an addendum that showed the building to be applied to split face masonry, masonry units so that they could get construction started and pursue the variance while they were construction, while they were working on the building. Um, so staff reviewed it. We do realize that the point is to, so when you're driving down the country club, you're driving down North Bell Dawson, Patterson, our residential neighborhood, so it doesn't look like the industrial park. So staff reviewed it. We understand that metal is what they wanted to use. Understand that. Unfortunately, there is no hardship. Hardship being something beyond designs control. Something took a bracket hole, something, something beyond designs control. So unfortunately, staff could not support the various requests and recommends for denial. We do understand that there might be some perception of mitigating circumstances. Driving down where this building is being built, there is a pretty dense area of vegetation where visibility of this building might be limited. So if the board is so inclined to potentially create the variance, we'd like to see three conditions be placed on that approval. One, that it's for this particular building only. Number two, that this stand of greenery of landscaping be left. And number three, that the proposed sheet metal siding of the building be a dark green to further prohibit, well, to further in, decrease the visibility of this building from the front. Does the board have any questions? Blah, blah, blah. Anybody have any questions or comments at this time? So just so I understand, the, the plans are approved for yes. them to go forward as a split face building. Yes. And keep in mind that the whole building is not required to be facaded. Just the front of the country club is being kicked back. The rest of it is allowed to be metal. If this was being built in the CC portion, would it be allowed? The only place, the only zoning districts where metal siding is allowed to be visible is in one of the two zones. So even if it were totally in the CC, it still would require variance for some sort of facade. So visible from the road, or I guess what I'm understanding is that you said they only have to wrap it 10 feet back with block and then they can change to metal. Right. What is the what allows them to do that? Why, why would, I mean, because one whole side of this, really two, at least two sides of this are going to be seen from the road. The, regu the regulation mandates that only the front of the building okay. and can be back on each side. Think about it, because I'm saying obviously you wouldn't be seeing the sides of the building, you'd be seeing the front and then the sides would be next to their neighbors. Yeah. But we're looking at the back of the building. Correct, right? because the front of the building is to be facing the the road, so they can they can pull in the golf carts, right? I mean, have you all talked about just breaking the whole thing? I mean, what the, what, is it just not feasible in terms of the cost? That that would be a question for the representatives. The only requirement is that the part facing the front yard can can be back on the side. How about like uh, like uh, concrete side? Is that, is that allowed? Mm -hmm. They just don't want to spend the money. That would. <laughs> this that this you, you can ask a question. I'll be happy to. I'll be happy to. Thank you. Thank you for the applicant. Matt may have, I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
the actual front of this building faces the interior of our property. It does not face Country Club Road. So all that is will be on Country Club Road without any cladding is the metal building and the side. So, and, and that will, if you've ever ridden by there, it will be, the only place it will be visible is the main drive to the Country Club when you have to turn in. You'll be able to see it a little bit just past that through if you're familiar with that place, there's two old brick columns that were there from the plantation way back when. They're still there, you can see it there. But our plan is, and we're perfectly fine with this as a, as a condition, was to put in four or five, you know, Leland Cypress type trees there to even cover the floor. So the only place, once you put those in, they grow a little bit. The only place it would be visible is after you turn into the club. It, it, it is virtually invisible from Country Club Road standing directly. It, it, from me to that wall, all you'll see is the color. Now, one of the things that I, I want to make sure we point out, um, you know, Tracy and staff suggested that, um, and, and I think in our original application, which was before we finalized planning for the building, that this was going to be a dark green building because we have a, another metal building on the interior property that's a shed that's dark green. However, we learned that for no additional cost, and we have actually ordered um, a building that will be virtually the same color as all the rest of the buildings. It will be a darker gray, and we'll have a dark roof on it. So it's going to, and we've talked to Ron Allen, who lives across the street. We've talked to Dr. Evans, who lives across the street. Uh, Dr. Hobby, who lives across the street, uh, or has a house across the street, doesn't live there. And then Dr. Ron and his wife, who live further down the street, and told all of them about this. And they're fine with that. I mean, we've, we've shown them the color, we've shown them the color of the roof. So it is an impossibility at this point without spending about $60,000, which is the cost of building, to get a different color to get the dark green that was suggested as a possible, um, as a possible condition. So I would, I would appreciate that not being a condition because we're going to back up and look at that. That will kill this request. Um, but I want you to understand we are leaving that existing buffer. We're adding. Adding to that buffer, buffer whether you put it as a conditional variance or not. But this, just adding a siding, which, you know, the cheapest siding, we had vinyl siding to cover 10 feet and on each side in the back uh, elevation, would be about uh, between a five and $8,000 expenditure. For really, absolutely no purpose. There's nobody against this from, from a residential standpoint. There's no, there's no view of it. We had this exact issue come for the planning commission a couple months ago. I, I didn't understand it, and I don't understand this particular provision to LDR. I don't think it's, especially, especially read along with the definition of front yard, um, it, it does not meet every situation. So I, I would appreciate y'all considering um, the variance request. You know, the, uh, we're, we're perfectly fine with leaving the buffer, and we're perfectly fine with adding to it. We cannot at this point accept any sort of color, um, which is not called one of the LDR anyway. That would be just a complete um, addition. So if there's any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer those. How tall is the building? Um, okay. ten, ten foot. Ten, ten, ten foot E height. Ten foot E height in the pitch. Oh, what's the pitch at the top? It's a very small pitch. I think it's 112, is that right? It's a. It, it's not flat. There's not going to be a whole lot of roof to be seen unless you're well away from the building. So you're saying that if you, what's the square footage on the building? Uh, it's uh, 65 by 127, a little over 8,000. 8,000? It's pretty large. Yeah. But if you go out there and look at it, it, it I mean, it, it is not, only it's out of character, and especially once we finish the additional renovations, it will look part of a cohesive campus. We will look, and look, I mean, we're going to landscape around it. We've got, Move the trash dump. Just going to, I think it will end up looking a ton better than what's there now, which is just basically raw storage and trash. And when it was originally submitted, it was specified it was going to be green. Right, but there's no, there's no, there's no requirement to specify color in the LDR. Where, where's the detention point going to be located? It is between the. Um, it's just basically just to the north of the car building between it and the main drive, where the road's proposed car building. Everything is sloped to that detention, and the detention is only maybe this big. Is it the area that I was out there that had the three palm trees sitting in the middle of it? There's one palm tree in the middle of the detention, and there's three that are on the edge of it. They have been removed. 
Okay. So there will, there will be a large open area right next to this. Uh, yes, but if, you, if you're familiar, when you come in the main drive down the left side, there are bushes that are, I would say, five feet high. Um, and the rest of it is, is a grass area with, well, with trees or probably, I would say, ten trees in there. Do you have a color chip or anything to show up what the gray, gray is? I do not. It's, if you're familiar with the, the color we painted the main building, it's a, I would say it's between a dark, a light and dark gray, kind of a medium gray, it would be basically the same color. I have a couple of comments. Okay. And one is maybe a question. If they had vinyl siding, they'd be good. They could put a rainbow flag on the side and vinyl side. They only have one front yard. This is their front yard. You're lucky you don't have two front yards. Because then you have this problem on two sides. And some people live in town, they have two front yards. This is a problem. Which I think is a problem for the LDR. But that's a that's one. Okay, and as far as green, I when I was a kid, I read a book. It was about building a fort in the woods. And the um, children built a fort in the woods and they painted green so that they couldn't see it. But when it got to be winter, it stood out like a sore thumb because it was green. Because what you really want to paint a fort in the woods is brown or gray, like a tree trunk color. So I'm good with gray. Those pictures were taken about two weeks ago before everything really started off. taking off. I mean, that's a normal there because as you know, nothing really I guess my biggest concern is as you're coming down this road yes, where the existing uh, original columns are that sit there, um, That's you're going to see the broad side of this building. You're, you're going to be coming down this road and you're, I agree that you're not really going to see the end front and front of this building. You're going to be seeing the long broad side of this building and the roll doors and everything else because as you can see the vegetation kind of starts to thin out as it, as it heads up there and then like you said there's going to be a large detention pond out here in front of it also which will be a broad open area which I'm assuming will just that, be grass. That's exactly where we're talking about playing the legal cypress so we'll go away with that view. Okay. So that, you're, you're familiar with I guess legal cypress. Right. Pretty dense vegetation. So, so that's what I was going to ask is are you planning to from this corner on up to completely block that view. Yes. Okay. And we're, we're, we're also talking about taking down those columns because they're decrepit and they will fall down. We're just trying to determine if there's any historical issue with us taking them down. So, and, and nobody seems to know the answer to the question. So. But if we do that and plant these, I mean, that, those columns of pure sand that don't look very good. None of that does, and we think we can make it all the better. Um, you all know that I'm a master gardener. One of the things I really care about is native plants and landscape. It would be my preference if we would plant a native plant rather than a safe uh, Leland cypress. I know that they grow fast and are bushy. They have some issues because they can get a rust and um, no caterpillars eat them. Because no caterpillars eat them, you have less birds. Um, and if you planted something that was native in the landscape, I would be happy. A wax myrtle. I'm not a gardener. A, 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 a wax myrtle or a, a holly. Um, something that would be native to South Georgia, you know, show off the great plants we have, you know, put some red buds out in the country. Any other discussion? Any other questions? I do want to emphasize that every resident of one and two is out of town that will have any view of this building as satisfying. I don't have I don't have letters from them, I'm, I'm only going on my <laughs> My reputation, but we have talked to all of them, and all of them are okay with them. So. Okay, before you leave, Tracy, could you back it up on time? Uh, go forward. One more. There. Uh, would you have a problem if it was specified that from the western edge of the building wrap around that there be significant plantings of multiple types of vegetative buffer so that you year round so it stays green somewhat 
Augustums or whatever. I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Okay. Two things. We're still trying Where to. Where it's significant or two. That's I understand that. that big. <laughs> so, the point is, I understand that the people that live across the street say they don't have a problem. But we're still looking at it from aesthetics, from people that are driving down that road, specifically westbound, and they look and they say, Lord, there's a monster warehouse right here. If you started here and wrapped around so that it was concealed with enough to cover it in conjunction with what's already here, and that it be maintained in its entirety. They don't turn it in and cut any of the other I will say this, uh, from my, so that, that vegetation probably comes to here now. And it is within, or will be within probably five to seven feet of the building on the back side. I don't know that there is room without cutting some that is existing to plant here. Now there may be on the side here, and there's already five feet here and going here. So we would like to see and there's more than five feet. And there's also trees here. So what we're trying to do is, yeah, we don't have a lot of winter and all the leaves don't necessarily fall. In the summertime, when it's nice and green, it's going to be camouflaged pretty good. Except what you see over the top of the five, six foot, seven foot that's here. Right. Isn't right. there some kind of bamboo that's up there? That's there is. And that bamboo doesn't go away. I think yeah. it's pretty much there. The reason, the, re the reason I know it, I used to live across the street. Most and I used to drive my, my motors, my moped, through there, to the test force. And so I know that there's bamboo there. But Most of that buffer is bamboo. Yeah. For noise. I got another question. All right, like I'm just trying to relate this to something that I know, and that's Amelia Island Plantation. When you're going down A1A, and Amelia Island, I don't know, you, you probably know this, on the plantation, everything's green. The buildings, whatever, they have storage, they have, they have, they have foliage, whatever, but they, everything's green to mesh with the landscape so you don't drive by and say, oh my God, a big old white building or, or a gray building. You don't even notice it, it's green. And I can understand why they're trying to say it's green. It should be green. How hard it would be to, for it to be green? Oh, it's, it's a pop. It's been ordered to be green. It is going to be gray unless we, I mean, it's paid for, it's done. It's not a green building. It's a, it's a $60,000 venture to get a green building. Green fence. Why do you want to keep it in Before we get too far, and I, I don't, I'm not, Please don't take me as arguing with you. But the whole purpose we're here is we are trying to get the most out of 490 members' dollars. Okay, because we don't, it's not my money, it's not, it's 490 people that are trying to do this. So we're talking about trying to save five to seven thousand dollars. So if we plant five thousand dollars worth of plants, we might as well put pink by the side of there. If we Put a seven or eight thousand dollar green fence. We might as well put the pink vinyl the side of them there. You, you understand? I mean, I, I mean, you put I, pink vinyl the vinyl side. I don't think your members are going to be too happy. Well, I, I so I mean, I you can write it all you want to, but I mean, no, 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 it's, it's not. not all, but what, I mean, what I want you to understand is, I'm not threatening. I'm just telling you what the law allows. What LBR? Allows. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to go. I want to stop. Right. I want to go there. Uh, so you have designed and submitted plans to have uh, some. Half face something on here yes. that's going to cost eight thousand uh, dollars, and you're just trying to save the money from that, so that you can use it on something else. And then we're going to tell you, and the something else is going to be some plants, man. Uh, that's that's sort of where we are. He's going to save money on not having it be the siding that needs the letter below, which I can understand why they they don't want to do that, and we're going to make them do something else. So. I, I understand your point about sixty thousand dollars that you have already ordered the building before this was granted and before it was noted in the original plans you were going to do green and then you backed up and changed horses on us. If we asked you to spend 
maybe ten thousand dollars worth of additional plantings, you're not spending sixty, you're spending eight, nine, ten thousand. No, 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 Alan, he's already he's spending eight thousand to make it letter of the law. Mr. Mr. with all due respect, I just withdraw the variance and put this one on because it's only going to cost five and seven. That, that, that's, that's the issue yeah, here. That's that's entirely up to you. If you want to pull the and make the change and as long as as long as the code says ten foot facing country club, I mean uh, the wall facing country club is ten foot down each side, you totally meet and we're null and void here. But that's but I'm asking for a variance from that. I'm asking for a variance so that we do not have to do that. We are already planning to put in plants to, to buffer this, to not, I mean, be virtually no view of this from Country Club Road when we're finished. As, as, what, as our plan is saying now. And if you ask me to put in the plants down to, to buffer the entire view from Country Club, that's fine. But on the interior of our lot, I don't think that becomes, I mean, you can already see three great buildings, or will be able to, from Country Club already. And you'll see one more. It'll just happen to be metal instead of brick. <coughs> and the painted gray brick looks virtually the same as metal from a distance anyway. Does it have architectural shingles on there? What's the roof look? What it's a metal look? roof, but it's a dark metal roof. It's a it's a dark gray. And this is a medium gray on the side. At this point, you know, my concern is to try to camouflage as much as you can of it. Just like Paul was saying, so the people driving down the country club, they're not meeting a huge blank gray wall. At least the country club has texture, windows, contours, posts. We're, we're going to be dealing with a flat metal wall. Well, it won't just be a metal wall. You're going to be seeing roll doors in it, too. There are big roll doors in that wall. So, I mean, it's it's a, so it's a warehouse. That's the side, though. That's not the, that's not the yeah. front yard. That's the side. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying is you're going to see, a, you know, you're going to see the end wall, and then you're going to see the side wall, which is a bunch of roll doors. Any other questions? Any well, other discussion? Why did they order the, the gray uh, vinyl siding without getting the permit? Because it's not. You don't have to have a public permit. Right, I mean, I agree, but I mean, I mean nothing requires us to say we could have said it was going to be a red. I mean, you can no, do a pink. I'm sure you're, you're more than your mind. The members aren't going to be happy about it. I, I say that to make the example. The LDR says nothing about color. So if, if you could put out of your mind for a second color, there's nothing in the regulations that allow any designation of color. Now, what we're doing here, if you understand, we're, we're trying, we're going to review every building that you can see from Country Club Road. And they will all be a uniform color. And at the end of the day, probably three years from now, this will look like a tremendous facility instead of a little bit of hodgepodge we have now. An old, you know, red brick with an old border on it that's there now. So, in any event, I, I don't know if you can see the vision or I've adequately described it, but I can promise you in three years it will look much better than it does now. And this will be one step in the process. And that's the reason for the color is we believe that once you have that building, a great tennis building just beyond it, a great pool building, you know, in the distance, and then another building gone with a better view, which you'll be able to see from the country club. So all of that taken together will look much better than four great buildings and a green one standing there in the which is what you can see. No matter how we buffer it, you're going to see this somewhat from every direction you come on country club road. So whether it's green, black, red, or gray, you're going to see it. Right, so can't you understand their trepidation about driving down the road and having to see a big old white building? Yeah, it's not going to be a white Well, it's going to be gray, white, grayish white. And you probably won't even notice it with all this buffering, with all the pitch that buffering. I mean, I would argue to you that you would, you would if, unless you knew it was there, unless you went to the country club, you would hardly ever see it. <clears throat> or country road, I should say. I'm ready to take care. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Well, Anybody well, out here? I do have a question. Would it, I mean, would it be a hardship to just meet the requirements um, as far as uh, the 10 feet side, I mean, the siding and everything there? 
It's just a five to eight thousand dollar decision. That's all what we're trying to save a little bit of money so we can put it elsewhere and continue making this better. Anyone else here in support? Yeah, I'll Anybody, is there anybody here in opposition to this request? Was there any contact to the office concerning the nice red signs? Yes, we did. We had one lady, and I did not get her name. She lives across the street from where the building is supposed to go. She did not want it to be a metal building because she did not want to look her words, she did not want to live in an industrialized building across the street from her house. It said that she couldn't come to the meeting because of medical, she had some medical difficulties. Okay. Is that the only one? Okay. Any other questions? Any other discussions? Keep in mind that we are technically dealing with the narrow end of the building facing the country club, which is the front yard as far as LDRC is concerned, 10 feet down each side, and with whatever buffering is there or buffering added. Uh, originally, they had said they were going to paint it green, now we're dealing with gray. And I guess that's pretty much the meat of the situation. Okay. I'm, I'm ready to make a motion. Would you make a motion? I make a motion that we grant the variance with the following conditions. That the variance is only applied to this building, not any other building on the Country Club property. That the existing buffer along Country Club Road be maintained. And that additional buffering be made with native plants of an evergreen variety. Um, natural plants. Uh, na natural plants of the of the type of um, uh, native holly, um, um, wax myrtle. Uh, there's a lot of evergreen shrubs that will grow to be tall, ten feet or more. That um, and let's see, um, what's our regular side yard uh, when we do plant density when you're up against a residential area? How many plant things do you have to do? We've got the number. How many plantings are supposed to like? If we were, if we're a residential against residential, imagine if we we're commercial against residential. What does the density of the buffering have to be? How many plants are on there? Well, there's a setback that comes into there as well, but in this case, it doesn't matter because we're dealing. With right, right. But I, I don't want to just have them say, "Well, we put three plants out, and that was enough." I wanted to actually buffer. Know, be enough plants so that it covers up what they're doing. Tracy, I think it's ten foot plants in the But she's asking how many plants in how, how many how many how close are the plants? Okay, well, I don't want just three plants. You know, I want a sufficient number of plants to cover we're the already, building. We're already planning exactly that. Yeah, well so I I want to make that a condition so that it actually happens. That's my motion. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. And I'm not going to try to restate it. <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on in there. Uh, you can write it down to she's doing it. Okay, uh, without specifying how many trees or plants, it's just we need it thick. Uh, do I have a second? Second. That you will? Yes. Second, Dr. Howes, will all in favor raise a hand? Two. Three. All opposed? Three to two, it passed. If there's any concern about what we're trying to accomplish, please touch base with Matt and Tracy. Like part, part of the problem with this is. It's not supposed to create a uh, pre-existing type thing so that somebody comes in and says, you let them do it now, I want to do it. 
theoretically each case stands on its own regardless of what we did or did not allow in the past. And, and I'll just say the reason that I let have it is because I want those native plants. Otherwise I'd just say put the side up and meet the, meet the rule. But I want the native plants. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Please make it look good. Okay. Uh, at this point, other business approval minutes for the March 7th meeting. I did not see anything jump out and say change me. Did anybody else see anything? Can I get a motion to accept the minutes? Motion to accept the minutes. I have a motion for Dr. Howell to accept the minutes as presented. Do I have a second? I second. I have a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Good to go, unanimous. Any new business, old business, anything we need to talk about? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. I did put a letter at your desk. Um, and basically, it's a letter in support of Gretchen's reappointment to the board. A lot of um, <laughs> We did get one um, applicant for Dr. Howell's seat. And next month, um, May 2nd meeting will be Dr. Howell's last meeting. So maybe we can bring some cupcakes or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, just to show our appreciation for, you, for the years you served. Um, but I am planning to take this before the commission, either their last meeting in this month or their first meeting in May. So if you can sign this letter, we'll put that as part of our agenda packet. Okay. Does anybody on the board, just in case you haven't seen it, anybody on the board feel like that this is accurate, that we're not putting words in your mouth? Try not to laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty humorous. I just I want to make sure that this is not going against somebody else's feelings. Have it. It's down there. It's going to come. Because it's, we are submitting this. to it. I can make any changes we, to it. We are submitting this on behalf of the board, not, yes. <laughs> not specifically me as chair. majority of the ones that are here that are ready, please submit it. I will sign it before I leave so you can have it. Okay. Any other new business, old business, city business, county business, nobody in business? I don't have anything else. We're starting our straight next month in zero cases, so it'll be the Carmelo show next month. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your participation and your service. We stand adjourned.